No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Limelight, makers of professional lighting for independent filmmakers. My Road Reel International Film Contest. Enter at myroadreel.com. I'm here with uh, Dan from Black Magic. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Tell me about this camera. So this is our Ursa camera. We uh, are very pleased with it. Uh, obviously announced new here at NAB. And what we've really kind of been looking at over the last year, year and a half is you're really thinking about how we create a full-size production camera. And Ursa is kind of born of that. How do I create that full-size production camera that can kind of have right out of the gate all the bits I need to have that full-size production? So when we started building this camera, a lot of what we wanted to think about was not only adding these features, people were like, oh, that camera would be great if it had, if it had, if it had, if it had. Obviously, that becomes a much bigger camera. One of the other big things we were thinking about is, how do I make this a camera be that can be a one-person camera? How can I make this be a camera that I can have multiple zones around where people are working with? So, you know, while someone can basically control this and use this, you know, part of what we thought about was, you know, we can come over here, we can use our big 10-inch screen, I can have a director or a DP sitting here framing a shot and getting everything ready. When I move on to my other side here, well, I can have an audio guy hooked up here and adjusting my audio levels, soloing out audio, making sure that's fine. And I can have an assistant sitting here working on focus and pulling focus, looking at how full my actual CF cards are going to be. Right. So one guy can operate it and use all of this. But also, if I'm really doing a full production where I've got guys specifically for each job, uh, you know, this is a camera that can be worked around that. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to create it so this is basically a removable, we can pull the whole sensor and the whole lens mount off here. Now it's not something that I'm going to be doing every day, you know, there's a thermal connection there, I don't want to be just interchangeably, but perhaps I'm using this as an EF-based camera for the first year, and what happens if, you know, one of the other announcements we right. want to do with this is to have a B4 version mount, now that may be a different sensor. What happens if in two years from now there's even a better sensor that we want to put in? Well, now I can sell this as a different upgrade that has a different lens mount and has a different sensor package in there. So the upgradeability idea is something that was really important to us as well. So is there a reason you didn't make the sensor separate from the lens mount uh, removable? Part of the package, just the way that everything fits in here. Always when we're designing these cameras, it becomes a matter of how do we make everything fit together, and that just made the most sense to yeah. have that all be part of one kit together. Okay. So. And so part of it too also is the back focus stays the same if you keep it. That's right. Now together. it's not a factory upgrade. So now pretty much this is the same sensor you're already using in the in the 4K camera. Yeah. And so now, but this is now doing 60 frames per second yeah. up at RAW and ProRes. Yeah, the big, the big thing that allows us to be able to do that is the fact that the sensor is able to do that, even on the question 4K, but the thing that's always hindered us with before with doing higher frame rates is heat. Um, so there's two things that we've done on here. Number one, we've added 12 gig SDI. So 12, we've been upgrading a lot of our products to 6 gig SDI so that we can do more Ultra HD. 12 gig SDI lets us do higher frame rates, but it's challenging because A, there's more cost involved there, but B, the heat there, and then the heat with the sensor. So what you see on this camera that we've designed is, feel up here, there's a, there's a small fan that's blowing out some warm air. Now that's not what's cooling, that fan is just to blow. Right. It's actually water cooling cooling built into the camera. Wow. And that's what's cooling the sensor so that we can do the 60 frames per second. Um, and that's what the sensor is capable of. Perhaps later if we find an even higher frame rate sensor that we're happy with, we could potentially put it in there. But this is built to be able to deal with the heat that would deal with higher frame rates. But 60 is what this sensor is capable of doing. And we've addressed the heat issue here, which is unlike what we'd be able to do on the, on the current you know, 4K production camera model. The camera overall has a more traditional feel than perhaps our other cameras. We're never doing something because, well, that's the way it's done. It is just not the Blackmagic right. design way. It's always about what can be improved, how is it going to be used. I mean, we are, at the end of the day, guys that want to use these products. And, uh, you know, one of the things we thought here was, well, I can do the EVF if I would like to do the EVF, but you know sometimes I just want to go ahead and put this out, and I can have a director or a DP working here. Um, it's we want to have this really strong hinge here, so it's going to last forever. Um, but being able to tilt it and have this wide viewing angle, so maybe it's a couple people that are standing around to look at a picture and being able to get a good idea of what's going on. So. Um, Great 10 inch screen, great 1080 display. Yeah. So we have you know, a, a decent enough high resolution image there. And then being able to have our basic controls over here so that I can uh, you know, have these very similar controls that we're used to on the Cinema camera. So one guy sitting here can work with all of that or someone can put it up and have the EVF, um, the flexibility. You know, Blackmagic's big on creating a flexible right. product here. So now in the new thing here too is so the C fast cards instead of SSDs. Now yep. is that 
allowing you to get faster speeds a little bit more reliably. A, a, a little bit they are more designed for video so um, they, they should be able to allow us to deal with the higher speeds obviously they're a smaller package so again in designing the how do we make this all fit in the design um, they are a smaller package there um, they are still a bit expensive the 120 gigs are twelve hundred dollars that'll give you about 20 minutes of the ProRes or six minutes of the raw but the really big thing here is much like on our hyperdex we can do the contiguous recording so one is recording it fills up closes the frame next frame starts on the next one pull it out now i can go forever how practical it is for everyone right. maybe not but it does give some uh capabilities right. there about being able to kind of record uh, indefinitely right so that's kind of one of the things that puts this in kind of a higher price bracket is the fact that these are c the c fast cards that are more expensive than just plain over the counter ssds just regular ssds but, but the big thing is they're still off the shelf parts the last thing we want to do is create the black magic here's what you're buying for us you can only buy it from us so they're still off the shelf parts right. and like all hard drive type solutions they're going to become cheaper they're going to become more ubiquitous right. out there in the market so we feel pretty good about that as well so now in terms of price the the EF is six grand, right? So right. then the PL is sixty five hundred. Sixty five hundred. Now you haven't announced anything for the, uh, the other. So one. so we said we're going to do a B four. It's right. high on our list to do. We understand why having a B four base lens mount would be great. That's likely going to have to be a different sensor, and that's likely going to change the price. So we're not sure what that price is going to be. Okay. Um, and then you know as we go forward, we'll figure out what else we'll, we want to do with it. But uh, you know, basic body I think is forty five hundred dollars is kind of the price here. You're talking about each sensor package is going to be you know. 1500 2000 perhaps more but that's kind of a rough breakdown of what okay. we expect those kind of you know price breakdowns to be so now are you gonna you're gonna sell those these sensor things separately if people want to buy them yeah so when we let's fast forward nine months yeah. or whatever and we're gonna say okay well here's you know three or four SKUs that are going to be this camera with this package this camera with this package but then we'll also have to have a SKU which is just the EF with sensor just the PL with sensor so there'll be several SKUs that will kind of determine what product you're buying out of the door or if you're going to buy an extra bit of kit later so there'll be a little bit of flexibility in there raw recording is it going to be in the camera when it ships and raw recording for the 4k camera yeah so our, our hope here is the raw recording on the 4k camera is part of what is going to be the next release it's part of a release that we did really want to have to be able to beta at the show unfortunately it was one of the things that just wasn't able to make it quite yet um so that should be a a very shortly upcoming release um which have a few other bits for the normal production 4k um because it's the same sensor we fully do anticipate that um it will have the raw recording in it so uh there, there really shouldn't be any big challenges sensor wise and the with the recording since it is based off the production camera. So when it, when this ships, it should have raw built in. That's correct. It should really have. I'd be I'd be really surprised if it did. The only reason I could see it if it didn't, uh, on the off chance that it did, is, is is simply because we just didn't have the QA cycles to get that part done. Um, but technology wise, we should have all of that flushed out um, because we'll have the production 4K done. Great, great. So the other thing is uh, formatting the cards in camera. Yes. Is that coming? Is that coming to this camera? Is it coming to any other cameras? It's something that's been on our long to-do list. We think we can get those done. We, there's some challenges. We don't even do it on our Hyperdex yet. So that is one of those. There's a few other things that we think are a little bit more important that we can do software-wise for them. Um, so we we definitely do want to be able to do that. But there is there's not an ETA for any type of formatting inside the camera yet. It's difficult. It's difficult for us to say with absolute certainty, and I hate having people say they're planning their whole lives around using this right. camera in you know August right. 1st. And, and even when we do ship it in July, um, it's not like I'm going to get 10,000 units shipped over. We'll get you know several, and then hundreds, and then thousands. So you know people do have to be aware. Please, please, please be aware that you know uh, it doesn't mean that they're all showing up day one and everyone's going to get a camera. But right. but we do feel pretty good about where we are. Obviously, they're show we're showing them working here. We've got the software done using the same sensor package. So you know, and we want to push ourselves too. I don't. Right. We we are. I know this is going to be a surprise to everyone. We are not a lazy manufacturer. We do not show up at the show with one right. product. We have 14 some odd new products. We are aggressive with our ship dates. Sometimes they work great. Pocket camera was pretty much on time last year. Sometimes they don't. Obviously, the 4K was badly right. delayed. Right. So do you have a timeline on, on new firmware updates yet for any of that? The, the only one that I know of timelines for sure is obviously the next one, which is supposed to do the 4K and that uh, they believe the debayering for the ProRes, which literally we were hoping to have a beta of today. Um, just wasn't quite ready yet. Um, hopefully that'll only be, you know, again, it should have been today, but it's going to have right. to probably be another couple weeks there. 
and then we'll begin working on there's some, there's some other underlying pinning issues that we've got that we're putting in there that's a hardware thing that's going to allow us to do more software across our entire camera line together because okay. they're all kind of at different places in development so more of that is kind of behind the scenes stuff it's a little less exciting the 4k raw being the more right exciting. so you're, you're trying to make sure the uh, the firmware is the same throughout the all the whole camera range yeah, the, the last thing you want to do is say I want to create X feature and well I have to spend six weeks QAing it or building it for this camera and I mean how many cameras do I have now I don't want to be we want to have one consistent basic code across all right. cameras so when we do one update they can go to, so when we look at some of these really cool features we have over here right. well they're in here how do I make it so that I can take some of that some of it's not as applicable how do I take some of that and then apply it to some of our, our current cameras as right. well so you'd say it could be May maybe Hopefully we'll see something in April for that for that first beta, but you know, again, everyone's gonna have to fly back. Everyone's gonna have to recover from this crazy yeah. show. So we'll see how it goes. All right, great.